This reads, uh, from your experience, how are fear and anger related to each other? How fear, I suppose it means transforms, I guess. How fear transforms into anger or transform no, no. Uh, into anger and vice versa. Okay, that's one. Did I understand you correctly? That language produces thoughts, creating mess which prevent us from direct experience without fabrications. You told me to do good practice of refuge. Please explain what does that mean? Okay. You already answered questions concerning choosing the teacher, okay. I think so. Uh, reflecting to that, is it necessary to ask the teacher personally to accept, uh, accept me as his student, okay. You mentioned that if we don't know how to die, then it is sad. How important is poa to die? Can you please explain? Right, so now we have a number of them. Um, the good thing is that um, when we ask questions on the um, um, on the subject, then we can actually, even if the questions are a little bit different, it's, uh, it can help answer each other. Um, <coughs> that's why I often emphasize to stay on the, stay on the subject. <laughs> Is it good to go to hell in order to identify mind or in order to help beings? in all the situations or in order to understand hell and be able to help all beings. Okay, that's one. So, um, yes, so fear and anger. Um, um, I think I have said it in the past, um, because um, anyone can correct it, um, because it's just my own uh, way of understanding it. I'm not uh, saying that um, I know the literature, I know the teachings, and therefore I'm just a voice, you know, for it. So often, or what I normally say are just my own thoughts. So now, fear and anger, um, how, relate, how, how are they related to each other and how it transforms? Um, both fear uh, and anger and many other factors, many other types of what we call mental events or emotions or thoughts, um, uh, all of them, even com uh, even the word com even the word or the idea of compassion uh, idea of for example even patience all of them are actually just tools nothing more uh, they are not uh, defined um, from uh, from the conception of time some as good some as bad and therefore um, treat it accordingly. I don't think it's like that. It's just <clears throat> the Bodhisattva way means that um, uh, mm, to know how to sort of work with all of those, work with uh, fear, how to work with anger, how to work with patience, how to work with compassion. If you know how to work with it, then all 
uh, will be your friend. All will be a very helpful, beneficial one. So if you know that, then um, I think we can get an idea of, general idea of how almost all of these are actually inter sort of how, how, the, how they are all related. Then now, uh, particularly if you focus on fear and uh, anger, it just, there is no really sort of um, way of saying which um, st triggers which. It's, it's, um, it could be either way, it doesn't matter. It just, uh, each circumstance is different. Um, <clears throat> um, sort of what goes up must come, uh, must come down sort of thing. So therefore, more anger, more fear, that's it. Uh, because um, mm, sort of the more it goes up, the more it has to come down. So in the same way, the more anger we produce, the more fear we will produce, and vice versa actually. Yeah. Meaning that uh, if you become too timid, meaning too fearful, at some point it must go up, you know, and it will transform into anger. <laughs> um, but it, that's just uh, stating how that, how those two things function. Not in any way saying uh, that anger in this case is a bad thing or a good thing. It's just that's how it works. I suppose one could ask um, uh, a teacher to, for, for acceptance, to to, uh, to teach, uh, to help uh, follow the ways uh, of the Buddha Sattvas. One could, yeah, no problem. Um, that's it. But is it a must in this case? Is it necessary? Is it a must? Uh, that I don't know. I guess it depends on the circumstances and uh, and uh, on the individual. And concerning to do good practice of refuge, um, I guess I mean just that. Yes, I did say um, in that manner more or less that language, almost like saying language, language produces thoughts, and so on and so forth. Um, the, the reason why I was using uh, things like saying, describing, using the word language to describe uh, certain things is basic, basically trying to describe. Um, what we say, namto. Uh, when we say concepts, you know, to, to describe that. Um, <clears throat> so, use, uh, sort of taking a different approach to that. But I don't mean anything uh, beside that, because um, it's um, not knowing how to um, manage namto then produces, as it is said in the Tabot Hajin, that then it produces uh, all of this, this great round samsara, and uh, not knowing and knowing and that um, then produces, of course, the enlightened state. So, um, therefore, I don't mean to sort of demonize language, but it's just that um, um, we need the tools, of course, of communication. So, therefore, naturally, we have language. So. For example, fear, anger, patience, compassion, these are um, um, tools of communication. And so therefore, if um, 
uh, first of all know that they are such and at the same time if you know how to work with it then of course um, it helps and now the last one from this it says now concerning is it good um, to go to hell um, now of course I was trying to use humor there, but I don't mean to sort of go overboard with it um, and uh, raise unnecessary emotions. It's just um, uh, in the last chapter of the Bodhicaya Avatara, um, um, it's the dedication part. And in that prayer, then it says, wherever um, sentient being uh, how to say, uh, needs my uh, help, then exactly there uh, may I be born. So therefore, yes, of course, uh, it is definitely a Bodhisattva's um, part of or heart of Bodhisattva's conduct, their aspiration and uh, their application also to be, to be anywhere where it's needed. So, um, that doesn't mean that, of course, they're to sort of uh, fight against, um, um, how do you say, the, the guards of hell uh, and win a battle and, uh, um, and then uh, sort of like getting out of the dungeon and be the hero sort of thing. <laughs> Not fundamentally like that not fundamental like that. It's just, <clears throat> who knows, maybe of course interesting to think that way, but if, if it helps to bring inspiration. Um, but the point is, the, the, the subtle point is to say, is to know uh, that any state within the six different realm, within the uh, wheel of life, uh, if we can accept it, yes, uh, the first noble truth says, uh, uh, well, in Tibetan it's Dunghal Shepracha, means that to know or to understand, to come to terms, in other words, to accept. Uh, if you can accept it, um, if you can accept that um, the conditioned world is by no means from itself, if it sort of portrayed as a separate thing from itself, but of course both were good teachers, uh, and so one of the teacher, of course, was sort of personality was such that was always quite sort of um, sensitive in some ways, not to say touchy, but sort of very sort of caring, and sort of the character was like that, almost like a mother sort of thing. So. Um, when he taught uh, um, to the gathering, of course, um, it, um, uh, he felt later on that maybe today uh, there was an effect, you know, that maybe the, the teaching did, did make a difference. Why? Because uh, I believe the, the gatherings were quite uh, uh, emotional and teary. And so, uh, his other friend um, uh, said, "Well, oh, come now. Like, you know, that's not the sign. That's not a sign that there is any effect. You know, emotion uh, can be produced if you know how to how to how to tell a story." He said. So you said, "Watch," and then the next time uh, um, the other one did the teaching, and he just talked about a carrot, actually in full length, you know, in terms of how sad these carrots are, that, how to say, how difficult for it, for it to grow from the depth of the earth, they don't get enough water when it's needed, they don't get enough sun when it's needed, uh, when they don't need the sun, then sun beats down on, on it, when it, when it doesn't need water, it, uh, the water drowns it, and so on. That, the whole crowd left again sobbing. <laughs> so, 
when I heard that story before, you know, when I was a child, uh, I thought, okay, that's interesting, but how could that be ever possible, you know? Impossible, I thought, I would never cry for a carrot. I told myself, no way. <laughs> and came Transformers. <laughs> maybe some of you have seen it. Uh, maybe some of you can relate to the cartoon, maybe, I don't know. But But it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's not a cartoon. It's the animated one, the first one. And it's the scene where Bumblebee was somehow captured by the sort of secret services. My goodness, I was left there in tears. You know, <laughs> I was literally crying actually, <laughs> because uh, Bumblebee, in that form, he wasn't able to speak. So therefore, he was producing those sort of strange like moaning sound, oh, oh, oh. and I was left uh, in tears, really. Uh, in, with my laptop, I was sort of, I was like, how could these men do such things? <laughs> so, uh, same thing. Um, if you just maybe uh, visit the hell realm, maybe you'll just see uh, sort of some lava there, some fire there, and some fire there. And maybe you might not understand a thing, you know. But you can relate. Yeah. Just like how we can relate to a carrot, how we can relate to a car. Uh, we, we can. Yeah. It's just we need a, a good illustrator to, and a skillful means to illustrate a little bit, make it more uh, connectable through means of words, languages, and make it relatable. So therefore, we're not de demonizing language also. We're just saying that we have to know how to use it. We're not demonizing concepts. We're not demonizing namtok. Uh, we're just saying that we know, we need to know how to use it. If you know how to use it, then uh, we can even relate to things that we, could, we thought we could not relate at all. Yeah? And, uh, and then we can even relate to the subtleties of, how to say, those states. Uh, those um, not necessarily. It has. We have to say that it's a hell realm as a physical state, but nevertheless, um, we can relate to. Uh, we can accept and relate to a state of the consciousness where, even though you are completely and utterly. Uh, disturbed, tormented by your emotion. Still, you have, we could say, humanity, that there is still, you know. And if it wasn't f uh, for that, then uh, Buddha Shakyamuni would have not uh, come into being, we would not be in, in history, actually. Because his very first um, one of the uh, yeah, very first, actually, uh, time where he generated uh, com uh, where he generated compassion for the first time was one time when he was in that state, and uh, he was one of those. Uh, uh, um, uh, he and another uh, another uh, fellow were pushing uh, a cart. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I suppose to produce more metals or something. Um, and then they were uh, being whipped, of course, uh, so that the cart can be pulled faster. And um, how to say, for some reason, in that moment, he felt that because he could see that his his friend was actually in a far worse state than him. Of course, he was equally tormented, but nevertheless, he could see that it's, it's far worse. And um, of course, there's no sleep, there's no break, there is uh, no meals, it's just, you just go on and on and on. And so therefore, when the whip and other, of course, weapons were being thrown on him, then he felt in that moment that not, 
give that person a break sort of thing. That, that, um, now this is a little too much now. Uh, and, and so therefore he thought, what if, what if say, you just give him a little um, break? And um, um, if you really want to uh, sort of punish uh, for no reason, because there are those guards, of course, known as uh, reflections of your fear. And uh, so he thought that um, what a terrible guard that had to say. If you really, if you enjoy tormenting, then, uh, um, as the saying goes, something like sort of um, take on someone of your own size or something like that. So meaning himself, you know, because at least he was fitter. And of course, in that moment, uh, the guard could read the minds of all beings, so therefore turned on him and. Uh, brought his hammer and before he beat uh, him on his head, uh, he said, who are you to think uh, that uh, you can be the judge of karma? And beat him and he died. And then immediately he was born in the celestial realms. Because, why? Because um, in a place where you would not expect, where it is impossible, utterly impossible to have any sense of space, any sense of compassion. I mean, it wasn't a real sort of amazing compassion. He just felt, he just used very simple feeling, very simple logic. And so, yeah. So therefore, it is possible. And then the other one was something about poor. Yes. Okay. Yes, so um, Pova, uh, all the six yogas, six yogas of Naropa uh, are, of course, very, very precious. It's true. <coughs> yeah, each of them, um, um, uh, in their own way, of course, uh, it has uh, the ability to help us um, Mm, again, work with namto. No, work with words. Work with words. <coughs> um, <coughs> um, so therefore, uh, if you just um, uh, formulate the question in that uh, manner, obviously the answer is yes, yes. Definitely. Um, but at the same time, um, it's important. I think in the past few days, I was trying to emphasize something underneath, beginning from the Amitabha initiation. Um, that um, it's related to what I said earlier today, that how wonderful it would be, you know, if, if it's, it would be okay to die, yes. And so, and then afterwards I said, uh, then everything will be fine. So now that part, that second part where I said, everything will be fine, or everything will be all right or something. We don't have to worry about anything. Uh, that part is a dangerous one. Yeah. So that's something we have to keep in mind. Um, Meaning that, of course, it will be wonderful, it will be beautiful. Um, I mean, there are two ways to go about it. Is that if we get to that state, of course, maybe we, we don't have to worry at all. Yeah. But right now, we are only in theory. Uh, in theory, we know that it's great, it's wonderful. But to a point where it makes us feel emotional. But that doesn't mean that we are there yet. Yes. So therefore, it doesn't mean that I say we have every freedom to do what we want yeah, and become careless. Yeah. So that's the, the answer to this question, actually. Uh, so we shouldn't become um, too um, uh, carried away, that's it. Too carried away by um, strong impressions and strong waves of emotions of feeling that um, 
uh, now that I'm a Buddhist, now that I have uh, taken refuge, now that I have generated bodhicitta, now that I have a Buddhist has a name or something, uh, now that I have received initiation, now I have done uh, this many years of intellectual course, now that I have done this many years of retreat, uh, now that I have received uh, the six yogas of Narupa, now that I have done poa, that I have a jail-free card, you know. Um, then again, we will be, um, how to say again, um, misusing the word, the language. And then uh, we have practically lost everything. Yeah. So therefore, it's, it's delicate. Uh, it's, I don't mean to say it's difficult and to make it uh, feel hopeless, but I must say that it's delicate. Yeah. Then, then if we can tread and uh, dance our way delicately, then great. Yeah. Now from Facebook, it says, when going through extreme hardships and traumas, how to avoid feeling guilty in terms of karma. <coughs> How to accept difficulties in life and not think about oneself as a bad person, someone who is punished by effects of one's past deeds. And another says, how, can, how I can help my old mother? She's very afraid uh, of death, and, uh, but she does not trust in ideas of Buddhism. So, um, yeah, because they are all related, that's the thing. So, yeah, extreme hardships. Mm. I suppose uh, the story of Gautama Buddha's um, uh, experience in hell probably says says a lot. Yeah, I mean that would be one place where you would never think you can do anything productive, actually. Uh, if you go, now that we were able to brush through uh, sort of, and um, brush through this, these sort of subjects a little bit, maybe we are a little bit more ready to somehow go into the descriptions of how each realm states are, so in terms of the Naraka world. Because um, the, if you go through the description and the, uh, of how each realm and in their own, in each continent of their, because there seems to be like eight, 18 different continents and so on of that realm. Um, and so therefore how each of those uh, feel, uh, how they are going, how they, how, they, how they are born there, and how they live there, and how they die there also. What is their routine like? What is their sort of uh, occupation like? You know? So everything, if you go into the detail, you will just know that um, in some ways it's similar to maybe one's own daily life in some ways. But, um, but it's on a sort of far mm, uh, higher sort of scale in terms of the intensity, so strong uh, that you feel like you have hardly even a time to breathe, uh, let alone do anything. So in a state like that, so first, if you read that chapter sort of thing, then we can uh, comprehend how challenging it is. And then we zoom out a little bit, and then we, medit then we focus on uh, the, one, the one of the Shakyas who could do it, you know, Shakya Muni. So that um, who could actually do something, do the impossible, that during the extreme, uh, uh, hardships and traumas that one can still do something sensible and productive. So those are, uh, I mean, to me, uh, being uh, through my um, um, Buddhist snobbishness, uh, <laughs> I find it very interesting. But of course, there are many now relatable. Um, individuals in our lives, of course, and if you can look at their life stories, um, 
you know, contemporary figures, also maybe a little bit back also, but there are many individuals who have undergone all kinds of hardships of illness and challenges and so on. And um, even then, at the end, um, they were able, the, the inspiring aspect is that they were able to do so many productive things out of it. So therefore, of course it's possible. Um, <clears throat> um, now, how to how to accept and now how to actually work with it? How how to sort of give birth uh, or how to give rise to that? Of course, or to understand understand properly, uh, we need to go th uh, through these literatures. Um, slowly, um, and the answers are all there. Um, so it would be difficult for me to sort of summarize the answer in a few words. Um, but if we, like for example, today we have had, we have, we have gone through a few verses, of course, and in those few verses alone already has. Uh, uh, has shown so many sort of uh, methods of how to actually work with it. So I think answer is not there already. But mainly, uh, actually, this of course question came later. But during the talk, um, I was uh, trying to explain that aspect: how to avoid feeling guilty in terms of karma. Yeah. So therefore, yes, it's. It's, it's only a temporary remedy to, to think that it's your own doing, that it's your karma. But like I said, it's about knowing sort of uh, um, the, um, the art of sort of at the right moment, at the right time, at the right place, use that. And then once done, you leave the vehicle alone. And once you have reached your destination, you don't need the vehicle anymore. So you leave it sensibly. And um, yeah, um, for anyone who is afraid to die, um, of course, as fervent Buddhists might feel that uh, we, it's, it's, it's our mission to propagate Buddha Dharma. And um, of course, with good intentions, of course, and then to liberate them uh, through whatever form of practice, power maybe also. Um, of course, that's one way. <laughs> but um, but what I would, what I normally feel is feel, and I'm sure everybody's feeling it. It's just uh, when I say it, it's it's sometimes more like sort of um, what you want to say, sometimes I'm saying it for you sort of thing, maybe. So therefore, uh, meaning, therefore I'm not trying to teach you something, you know, and drill something into you. It's just I'm saying the obvious. So um, the, um, uh, if we pro probably just repeat what I said in the past few days in terms of it's just words, you know. Dying is just words. Uh, dying is, uh, death is just a description of when life comes to an end, you know. Definition, it's in the dictionary, you know. <laughs> and um, if you're able to somehow uh, convey that, uh, in your own way. Of course, uh, you have to find your own way, of course. You have to find your own way in terms of maybe, who knows? Maybe by saying that will already do the trick, you know? It will, it will suffice. Maybe not. Maybe you have to explain it further. Uh, but who knows? Maybe it's just just the opposite. They are 
all situations are very unique that uh, of course now you realize that in this case your mother is very fearful of death and so therefore you want to help um, and you kind of understand on a relative level because of course you cannot read her mind on a relative level you can uh, um, feel through using common sense that uh, that um, she's not into any spiritual sort of um, you know depending on her own spiritual uh, paths but nevertheless wants the remedy <clears throat> but that doesn't mean um, no. uh, and then on top of it now you want to help uh, because maybe who knows maybe you are Buddhist and so therefore you think you know better <laughs> um, but uh, uh, sometimes it could be the case that uh, you didn't realize but you were more fearful of death than the person you are trying to help actually so therefore maybe the um, uh, rather than explaining that it's just words to the person maybe you have to tell it yourself tell it tell that to yourself because at the end of the day you have to be able to really truly convince the person you want to help so if you're not convinced um, but you have good intentions and if you say it's just words uh, the person will be able to see it through see it through your lips see it through your eyes that you're not so sure actually <laughs> so, <laughs> so actually who knows maybe that's the way it will help sometimes so therefore maybe the person who is actually who is supposed to be helped might actually be encouraged to help you <laughs> And that's how everything becomes okay, you know. So yeah, it's it's strange. It's a strange world. <clears throat> but the I think the bottom line is that uh, mm, you yourself have to at least get somewhere. And that's why we say, you know, attending uh, just intellectual sort of courses is not it that you have to uh, you have to practice it you have to meditate because um, then you'll get somewhere in terms of um, most of the case you'll realize that you're not getting anywhere uh, <laughs> that's a good thing you know um, at least sort of we know that uh, probably it's far better than thinking that I have reached somewhere because uh, that could often sort of m m mess with our mind uh, and feel sp spiritual so instead to know that it's impossible I, uh, it looks like I just really cannot do it and, and it's very convincing because it's almost the case that you cannot do it and there is no shame in it, there is nothing wrong with it one doesn't have to feel awkward about that and you accept it yeah. and uh, often that acceptance uh, will, uh, will, will later on in time be seen as another way of understanding that it was just words yeah. but you've, at, that, at the time you felt that you couldn't do it but later on you realize that mm. without uh, having that perspective that it was just words you realized on your own the same thing so actually that's a far more convincing one so therefore in that manner uh, if, you, if you can um, convince ourselves all the more better all the more better in terms of helping the, helping the other one because uh, we all can see uh, more or less maybe sometimes it might take a bit of time but sooner or later we all know what is the truth uh, um, meaning that uh, when it's uh, uh, that we will um, we will be convinced from reading uh, the gesture of the face the, the tone the 
the way that person carry him or herself, you know, carries themselves. It, it, it can be seen, yeah. More than language, but it can be seen. So therefore, probably that's one thing. Now, um, the last one is um, practically to convince myself it's a long way. Uh, practically, for me to really be even, even myself be okay with death seems, um, uh, how to say, far more challenging. And so, therefore, at the, but nevertheless, there is this person in front of me to whom uh, um, I have great respect and love, and in return also have cared for me. And so, therefore, I want to do something, uh, anything that I can. Uh, could be someone could be dying, someone could be sick, um, someone could be confused. What to do? Yes. Well, of course, a lot of things can be done, um, and um, who knows? Maybe one of them might work. Mm. Particularly in this case uh, of someone dying, um, I think if you can just find a way to say more than anything um, that it's okay to die, you know, that there is nothing wrong with it. Probably that's it, yeah. Whether that person feels it's RIP or not, doesn't matter. Although, of course, uh, if someone said to me, RIP, I would be very frustrated. <laughs> but um, um, it's, uh, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you just, in your own way, because you know the person, uh, in your own way, if you can somehow indicate that it's, it's really normal. Yeah. The sun sets all the time, every day. Um, but uh, n n not in particularly in a way that the sun rises again all the time, but just that setting part is very normal and it's not something to condemn, uh, uh, it's not something to, to mourn, um, it's just it's very, very natural. If you can find a way to say that, I think it's, I think it's it might go. Um, it might get somewhere. Yeah. But the thing is, um, mainly, um, there's no better way to say. It, but it has to sh show in you that it's really okay. So, therefore, spend as much as time uh, as you can um, uh, to. Um, with that intention and with that motivation that telling yourself that it's also okay. And then also say okay, say it is okay. Then um, there's a flow, you know. It's not like uh, when you're on your own, you think it's not okay, but when you're in front of that person, you say it's okay. But uh, I would really, really say that unless it's a very dire situation, uh, I would never really encourage someone to say that um, it's not okay to die. No, that's, that's the worst thing one could do. So therefore, meaning if we uh, talk about the pure land or if you talk anything about Buddhism or, or introduce certain ideas of Buddhism and if the introduction is somehow looking like as if um, it's not okay to die sort of thing, then it's, it's, it's the worst thing one could ever do. Yeah. So therefore, I would uh, say that um, use your own um, means, I mean, uh, in your own way, uh, uh, try to say that it's okay to die. I think that's about it from the from here
When a great Bodhisattva decides to be born, decides to be reborn among human beings by compassion for us, as for example, uh -huh, I wish uh, to know whether uh, he is by himself fully aware of who he is and why he has come back in his new life. Does he gradually become aware of it and uh, of his previous lives? Is he fully aware of it as soon as uh, he's a baby? Or is this subject r totally beyond our ability of understanding? Okay. What? Yes. Okay. So, the... Um, um, how do I say this? Um, I think a truly realized one um, meaning. Okay, it's like this. Yes, uh, Buddhist had of us. Uh, in this case, we have to talk about the Bhumis, I guess. So, <clears throat> normally one is considered a, a true Bodhisattva or real Bodhisattva once they have attained the first Bhumi. And uh, then from there onwards, uh, they uh, sort of refine themselves almost. Um, it's, uh, and their analogies like sort of, you are actually able to acquire the gold sort of in the, in the first stage. Then you refine it, you refine it, then you turn it into various sort of wonderful, beautiful things. So, um, but I, I think Buddhasattva, even if one is, uh, has gained the first Bhumi, I think uh, not necessarily they remember everything. Not necessarily they are in full control of their rebirth. Uh, they are not in total control of time and situation. But, of course, they have immense ability uh, due to their power of prayer. Yeah, power of, or in other words, power of aspiration. Because they have aspired so many um, virtuous things, pure things for so many lives that um, uh, their greatest vehicle is their aspiration. And based on that aspiration, then they can propel themselves anywhere almost. Almost like a um, wish-fulfilling jewel sort of thing. So, not necessarily, some they do, uh, because uh, prior to receiving, uh, prior to attaining the first Bhumi, I think uh, already, um, uh, how do you say, they have um, specialized uh, in, I don't, know, I don't know how to say, like, sort of purifying the mirror, one could say, in a way, so that you can see further, or purifying the lens sort of thing, that you can sort of see quite a number of distance of what, it could, uh, what the lens could see, and not just what is always in front, but uh, uh, furthermore. So therefore, it varies. The answer is it varies. Uh, there are some who remembers, uh, and there are some who who would need a sort of uh, further, I think, um, <coughs> um, further application. And as they sort of uh, gradually uh, attain the later Bhumis, then their qualities uh, shine more. So it depends, yeah. So some remember uh, and some don't. Now, of course, those who do, they are the tricky ones. Uh, because uh, um, they can act as if they don't. Yeah. Um, uh, meaning that um, not with really a negative agenda, but with a positive agenda. Um, because it's somehow, uh, I think the main reason is uh, f uh, for them to, um, to be able to connect with uh, with the condition. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it will just not make sense at all. And in fact, uh, um, develop curious emotions. Yeah. 
unique emotions. Uh, for example, um, Prince Siddhartha actually by then he, uh, he was well. In many ways, whether we look at it from the from the Theravada perspective or Mahayana perspective, more or less, I mean, he was at the he was at the verge actually. Yes, after all the accumulations of past eons, he was at the verge. So therefore, he could have actually uh, come into uh, this world with a bang, actually, <laughs> meaning he could have come in the most majestic way. Uh, instead of uh, displaying the twelve deeds, you know, he could have uh, done it all together a different um, sort of um, uh, presentation of his birth and so on. But no, indeed, um, actually, he did exactly according to the time and situation. Uh, he was born normally, yes. Uh, he had parents, uh, he grew up, he had teachers, he had friends, he had problems, he had emotions, uh, and go, went through all the stages, just like we all do. Yeah. And meaning to a point where you want to uh, live a spiritual life, he even did that. Yes. For six years he lived a very spiritual life. And then, at the end, it, uh, it came uh, to the stage of enlightenment. And so therefore, um, those true ones, uh, sometimes they have a reason why they do it. But um, that, uh, of course, none of us can really sort of, can, can really relate as, as it is said there. Maybe it's really beyond our comprehension. But one thing that we do know is that uh, if they are freshly Mm, uh, not the same. Uh, if they have just recently reached the uh, the first bumi, meaning during the last few lifetimes, <coughs> then it's possible that some of them don't really re remember everything, uh, like a flash. Yes, but through their character, uh, through their nature. Mm, through their temperament, most importantly, uh, it shows uh, that um, that there is something there. Yeah. Um, and of course, we can treat it the way we like. If you put on uh, a pair of goggles, uh, which says, "All must be unified. All must be same," uh, in the name of equanimity, of course, we can do that and um, sort of. Um, bring down um, the each individual's uniqueness. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, but um, uh, how do I say? Um, but at the same time, um, we can also sort of put on a very exaggerated goggle, pair of goggles, also, and just focus on the uniqueness alone. And uh, it could become very cheesy, of course. Um, but either of those two things, will they really amount to something? I don't think so. It will be just uh, interesting for the time being, but that's about it. So therefore, um, the best is just to let it be yeah. and uh, enjoy. Uh, enjoy that um, in, in, in a way that um, uh, these incredible manifestations that takes place, bless you, um, um, how do I say manifestations, um, how do I say we are just sort of fortunate that how do I say we are there to witness it and um, that's it, nothing more, nothing less, you know, we just enjoy it. So yes, that's my answer. Okay, so maybe the last one. Thank you so much, Your Holiness, for your many words and the opportunity to ask a question. I actually have three questions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I'll try to make this as fast as possible. First one is very simple. It's for all the practitioners who maybe start their nondro late or have physical inabilities. If we, for instance, have difficulties to do the prostrations due to knee, back, whatever problems, would you recommend to do as many prostrations as we can, say seven or 27, whatever, and do the rest while we sit down mentally and then proceed with Vajrasattva, Mandala and so on? Or would you say do as much as you can, do your Vajrasattva, do your mandala and make it like a lifelong thing to do your seven or 27 prostrations. What would you recommend? The second one? Okay, the second one, thank you. Second Our second question, okay. Um, second question is you have talked so much about language and the concepts and I somehow have the notion, I somehow put this together in my head and I would like to know if that is pointing in the right direction. It's like you're saying just label things differently or maybe even just remove the label of things and then the complementing concepts and our experiences that complement with it will change. Is this idea correct or not? And the third question also relates to a bit to this Facebook question with trauma and hardships, because you said something, among many other things, pretty incredible for me today, is when you talked about anger, you said, it's just like harnessing energy, and anger is just like an endless energy. And honestly, when I endure anger or hardships, or trauma and it's like never ending and doesn't seem to make sense and the notion or the, the awareness that it's just my karma is not sufficient, it's like it drains my energy and when you said that it was like, okay, so how do I get there? Could you please elaborate maybe on that idea? So I'll begin from on the third. Um, uh, the answer is... Um, now, for example, right now, after this question and answer, here is a meditation. That's it. The answer is there. <coughs> I was um, um, I think for the past few days, I was um, stretching a little bit about uh, um, the benefit of practicing compassion. So it's there actually, yeah. Um, it's possible, you know. In a, in, a, in a strange world, it's possible that one could be also equally traumatized by compassion. Yeah. Um, and so therefore, actually I think that, that was the thing that I wanted to say yesterday. So this is, the question is very helpful because um, yesterday, towards the end of our generalizing meditation, I actually wanted to say something, but I thought it went so well, you know. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Why I should interrupt the yeah, the flow? So, um, um, I was, I think, twice or thrice, I did say something about. Uh, you let that emotion, uh, emotion or that feeling, that experience of compassion rise. Yes. Um, I don't know if we can really do it during our meditation, uh, formal meditation setting like this. Maybe it's possible, but most likely not. Yeah, to be really realistic. Um, I think that can happen in times where we display whether, whether we are men or women, doesn't matter, beside the gender, no matter who we are. There are cases in life where, we, uh, where that experience of motherhood, I think, comes, I think. Yeah. Um, it could be to one's children, it could be towards one's friends, it could be also to one's, towards one's parents also. Uh, anyone actually. And in that moment, um, it's really there. Yeah. And it's uncontrollable that to a point where it's almost, almost traumatic sort of thing. But of course, 
namely it happens to i think um, mothers i think actual mothers yeah towards their children uh, um i think there is very strong sense of care love we could call it compassion maybe we could call it care maybe or we could call it attachment i don't know um but never there is something very raw and chaotic and unorganized uh meaning that you don't plan that now i will care and and so on and, and then later on i will go crazy and so on so you don't plan <laughs> but you just it just happens you know and so therefore when we are um, formally meditating what we are trying to do is simulate that i think yeah and that's very important i think and so therefore how do we s- simulate that um uh, how do we stimulate that simulate simulation is um by none other than focusing on very obvious factors so therefore you recall on the kindness of your of your either biological or non biological parents in this life um and uh, then draw on their um uh, kindness <clears throat> and then maybe you could bring something that doesn't mean that we have to have tears yes uh it just uh it could happen yes so therefore uh yesterday what i wanted to say was pretty much that that uh focus on something in that moment uh one thing that really sort of provokes that that type of experience what we call compassion it evoke that because in that moment uh, if you provoke uh, something like uh, desire or something like uh, anger or something of course is utterly useless so in that moment if you uh, in this in that moment uh, compassion uh, compassion alone that caring experience try to sort of stimulate that by whatever it means actually the generic meaning is none other than thinking of your of your parents and particularly of your mother yeah uh and i and i'll repeat it again either your biological or your non biological yeah, mother yeah. because there's always one in in one's life it cannot be that there's no one because if there's no one i think uh, we will not really feel human actually yeah so therefore there's always one uh so meaning there's always a mother in one's life in 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 whichever form so think of that and it could help so to some maybe that doesn't really make uh you cannot really connect so maybe you can use a maybe a little more radical sort of um stimulations so it could be a friend maybe yeah at a very very dear friend maybe so something like that or one could use some bumblebee <laughs> um <clears throat> then then <laughs> then I, then I, accordingly then see um uh let once that sort of fire like experience is rising uh don't be afraid uh and let it let it sort of burn yeah let the flame sort of rise and rise and rise and instead of sort of being afraid and uh, being sort of um fearful that it might sort of burn you or something instead just sort of watch it watch it rise and rise and to whatever limit sort of thing and um yeah often in the watching process itself uh already uh that watching process itself is working with that with that experience already because i keep saying you work with it you work with it yes so so now the reason why we do the practice of jnana is like that over and over again now for example when we uh the, particularly the state where we remain meaning when we give rise to the uh to the ray of light from the seed syllable to all sentient beings yes 
and coming back and going and coming back and all that. Um, that is just a visual aid, nothing more. But uh, what it really means is you, f you are constantly sort of feeding that fire, you know, fueling that fire by focusing on the very, every little detail of kindness. That's why in the uh, Jewel Ornament of Liberation by Gampoba, uh, it goes to the, down to the last detail is of how a mother actually cares. And uh, the details are amazing. Yes. So if that helps, one can focus on that. So that as you focus on each of the details, it's just like it means the same as radiating light and coming back, radiating light and coming back, same thing. And um, then you just sort of re maintain that process yeah, as much as possible and see that you can work with it. It is natural. It is not foreign. It is not difficult. Although, of course, when, it's, when that experience is rising, it could be quite overwhelming to a point where it can be trauma traumatic, maybe. Um, often it's not the case, but it's possible. So therefore, you work with that, you spend time with that, meaning you practice every day, you meditate every day, you practice the Chinese meditation every day. Get it? So, by doing so, then you, 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 you get to understand, you, you become, you are eased into it. You are eased into um, working with something that is nice and soft and, you know, easy. <coughs> then, you see, it's not direct, that's what I was saying in the past few days. It's not directly working against anger. But Indirectly, it will help. Indirectly, when now anger rises, yes, that you will almost see it identical. The rising of compassion and the rising of anger are almost identical. And, of course, now you know how to work with it because you've been working with compassion for so long that you know how to work with that, that rising. And uh, then your sort of habit, let's say, in this case, a good habit, yes, kicks in, auto drive, you know, autopilot sort of thing. And then you really uh, let it, let, don't, you don't really sort of fight with that anger and you just let it rise and you just watch it, you watch it, just like you watched the flame of compassion sort of rise, yes, in the same way you just let, you watch it. And uh, you watch, and you watch, and you watch. <laughs> yes. Basically, don't involve, don't get involved, yes? That's the whole point. You just let it, you watch it, and um, that is it, that is working with it. And um, then uh, that energy has fed you already. Whatever you needed to feed, to do, accomplish something, that energy has fed you already through sheer watching. Yeah. Okay. So meaning that um, when I say work with emotion, I don't really mean to say that uh, you do something with it, you know, like uh, you put it in a blender now and mix it with something <laughs> and make a cake out of it. Um, it's just you watch it. Watching, uh, watching it takes a, a lot of energy, yeah, because you are so tempted to actually, well, the moment you feel comfortable watching it, you, you feel like you want to get involved, you know? And uh, uh, that's, the, that's where you need the courage, not to get out of your chair, yeah. So, um, then in that way, then, yeah, hopefully, you know, with repetition, then it will become easier. But of course, we cannot, say, uh, we cannot um, part such advices to people who are uh, in the moment, individuals who are in the, in, in the moment. In that moment, there's nothing to do, yeah. In, the, in that moment, I guess, nothing to do but wait, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So that, and then the second one was about, I forget, the second question. The, se the second one was that you talked a lot about language, and yes, I had the notion, yes, I put it together with this, just yeah. remove the label or label yeah, it differently. That's pretty much it, yeah. yes. Because um, you first remove the labels, you mean remove everything, and then just uh, watch the sort of the raw aspect. And um, it will be fascinating, of course. And then you put the labels back. Yeah. And then you watch it again. And this time, it's even more interesting. Yeah. Because uh, you know, you've seen it before, but now you are seeing it uh, knowing the punchlines. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, that's it. And the first one was about the... No draw, no draw and yes. frustrations. Yes, I think um, um, I think in general I would say you don't have to force force it at all. If if you're physically, uh, um, first of all, you don't have time, and secondly, physically, if you're not comfortable, don't force it. Uh, instead, you can just do circumambulation. Yeah, that also uh, is part of the frustration. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. You.